These splicing videos are intended to show the techniques involved in splicing Samson high-performance ropes. Some repetitive sequences have been edited for time. Watch the video to become familiar with the individual steps of the splice. When performing the splice, follow Samson's written instructions for the step-by-step -step procedure. Written instructions at samsonrope.com. This splice procedure has been developed and tested for use with Samson Class II products only. Class II ropes are produced with high modulus fibers, HMPE, Aramid, LCP, or PBO. These fibers are often referred to by their trade names, Dyneema, Technora, Vectron, and Xylon. Instructions for this splice can be downloaded as an Acrobat PDF file from samsonrope.com and are also available in print form in the Samson Splicing Manual. The eye splice is used to form a permanent eye or loop in the end of the rope for attachment to a fixed point like a cleat or mooring bollard. An eye is also used to form the rope around a thimble to protect the rope when attaching to a shackle, chain, or wire rope. This splicing procedure preserves the strength of core-dependent double-braided rope construction where the rope's core is the primary strength member. We'll be using a tubular fid for this splice and for measuring the marks. A fid length is equal to the diameter of the rope multiplied by 21. There is another dimension that is required for this splice, the Z-length. The Z-length can be found on this chart. It is dependent on the diameter of the rope. We'll be splicing 5 8 inch Amsteel 2 for this demonstration. The Z-length is 7 1⁄2 inches. Please note that while the procedure is the same, the dimensions in these instructions do not apply to Samson Amsteel 2 Plus. There is a separate Z-length chart for Amsteel 2 Plus available in the downloadable instructions at samsonrope.com for free download. Begin the splice by marking both the cover and the core. Measure two tubular fid lengths from the end, make mark one on the cover. Using an awl, pusher, or other pointed tool, spread the cover strands enough to allow you to mark the core at the same point. Form an eye of the desired length and make mark 2 adjacent to mark 1. Again, spread the cover strands to mark the core at the same point. When splicing on a thimble with ears, slide the thimble on now and position between marks 1 and 2. Mark two extraction points, mark X, on the cover. These are measured from marks 1 and 2 using the Z lengths from the chart. In this case, we're splicing 5 8 inch Amsteel 2 rope. The Z length 1 is 7 1⁄2 inches, and Z length 2 is 6 1⁄2 inches. From mark 1, using Z length 1, 7 1⁄2 inches, measure towards the end of the rope and mark the extraction point. From mark 2, using the Z length 2, 6 1⁄2 inches, measure towards the end and mark the second extraction point. These are both mark X. Measure six fid lengths from mark two and tie a slip knot. Or place a pin or awl through the rope to keep the cover and core from moving. At the mark X closest to the rope's end, extract the core from the cover. To do this, you must spread the strands of the cover just enough to allow extracting the core. Here, we're using two awls to open up the cover strands. The rope is then bent sharply at that point, and the core is pried and pulled from the cover. Pull the core completely out of the cover. 
and make an overhand knot near the extraction point to keep it from slipping back inside as the other section of the core is extracted. Now, using the same technique, extract the core from the second mark X measured from mark 2 earlier. Extract the core from the same side of the rope as the first extraction. Note the mark made through the cover at Mark 2. Here, the mark at Mark 2 is being made a little easier to see. As is the mark on the previously extracted core at Mark 1. Now, pull about three fid lengths more core material from the extraction point. From Mark 2 on the core, measure two and a half fid lengths and make Mark 3. Untie the knot made earlier in the core tail. This tail will be buried into the core loop from Mark 2 to Mark 3. The core is now tapered. Measure 3 fourths of a fid length from the end of the core and mark. From the mark, Mark every other left and right strand for three strands. Pull out the marked strands and cut off. Tape the tail end into the fid. Insert the fid at mark 2 of the core loop. And bring it out at mark 3. Remove the fid. Pull the core tail through the core loop until mark 1 on the core tail, made earlier through the cover, meets mark 2 on the core loop. Hold the cores or put an awl or a pusher through both marks to keep them aligned. Now working from mark 2, smooth all slack from the core loop from mark 2 to mark 3. The tapered core tail will disappear into the core loop. If used, Remove the awl or pusher used to keep marks 1 and 2 together. It helps to attach the rope beyond the slip knot to a cleat or other fixed object. 
working from the pin or slip knot, smooth or milk the cover towards the eye. Also, keeping a little tension on the core as it feeds back into the cover will aid in getting the crossover point to bury. Continue milking the cover down until marks 1 and 2 on the cover meet. Periodically, pull on the eye to help move the core crossover point into the cover. A milking strap or a length of twine can be used to help milk the slack from the cover to the eye area. Smooth the cover of the eye until all slack has been removed. When the crossover point enters the cover, the milking is complete. Smooth the cover of the eye until all slack has been removed and the core material is completely covered to the throat of the eye. The excess cover material is now cut and taped, or lock stitched to the rope. Cut off the excess cover at the angle to taper, leaving a minimum of two times the rope circumference in length. Apply masking tape from the throat of the splice to the end of the excess cover material. Now, whip or seize the entire splice area over the taped area. For this step, the rope must be under tension. Full instructions for seizing are in the Samson Splicing Manual and available in PDF form online at samsonrope.com. The rope should be under tension as the seizing is applied. The seizing is actually a series of half hitches around the rope. This is best accomplished using a netting needle and needs to be followed in a particular manner. While holding the twine, pass the netting needle over the rope forming a loop. Pass the needle through the loop from left to right, tightening the hitch by pulling away from you, then rapidly towards you to set the hitch. This procedure turns the hitch under the seizing, rather than on top for a smoother appearance and less chance of snagging while in use. When the splice is about halfway across the area to be seized, Tape a loop of twine that spans the distance from the throat to just beyond the area that has been seized so far. Continue seizing over the top of this loop until the entire area has been seized.
pass the end of the twine through the loop. Pull the opposite ends to bury the twine under the seized area. Cut the twine off close to the seizing. The splice is now complete.